Welcome back, everyone, to our prayer journey with my toe. Today, we're going to adventure into Psalm 48. This is an end-of-day psalm, a millennial psalm, and an end-of-day psalm. And it is seen so clearly by the writer, the sons of Korah, that he actually writes as if he's present there. His faith is sight. That's how clear the vision God gives him. And I'm going to pick this up in Psalm 48, verse 8, just to get started. As we have heard, so we have seen the city of the Lord of hosts. In the city of our God, God will establish it forever. Selah. Think on this. Have we have seen and has we have heard, as if he's there, God's going to set this up forever. And he's seeing it. He knows it's going to happen. Now, I'm going to bring you to the contrary of this. This is the enemy of God, the enemy of God's people, Satan. And in Isaiah, you're going to see the comparison I'm going to make here. In Isaiah 14, uh, verses uh, 12 through 14, this is what it says. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which did weaken the nations? For thou said in thy heart, I will ascend into heaven, and I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I also sit upon the mount of the congregation, and this is a key verse, in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds, and I will be like the most high God. This is what he says here. He is going to do this. He is going to be the one that's going to rule. And yet we read on in Isaiah, he is cast down into a pit and the nations walk by him and see him in the condition that he is in. Now let's pick up this psalm in verse uh, 1 and 2. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised in the city of our God in the mountain of his holiness. Beautiful for situation. The joy of the whole earth is in Mount Zion on the sides of the north the king of the city. What is this talking about here? Well, it is talking about Jesus Christ came and raptured the church and the beginning of the millennial kingdom starts and Christ is reigning and the people are joyous. Now, what was the side of the north thing? Is this where the ascension point is in Satan's mind at least to the heavens? Is this his challenge to God that I can go into the heavens and I will send there in the sides of the north? Oh, this is a key place. There's a reason why God loves uh, that area of the world. It is the central per point of many things. And Satan tried to get his foothold here. Now let me read you some verses from Revelations 20. And I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key to the bottomless pit, and a great chain in his hand. And he laid hold on that dragon, the old serpent, which is the devil, and Satan, and bound him for a thousand years. This is where we are. All right? He's bound for this thousand year period. In verse 3, And he cast him into the bottomless pit, and shut him up, and set a seal upon him, that he should deceive the nations no more till the thousand years should be fulfilled. And after that, he must be loosed for a little season. You know, God's plan's got to take place. So what happens? All right? All of God's people that are on the earth were under God's command. But they have children. And Satan's going to be released to tempt those children again and to lie and see if they'll take a lie over the truth of Jesus Christ. This is the millennial 1,000 year reign. Let's pick it up in Psalm uh, 48 verse 4. For lo, the kings were assembled, they passed by together. They saw it, and so they marveled, they troubled and hasted away. Fear took hold of them, and the pain as a woman in travail. Thou breakest the ships of Tarnish with an east wind. What is going on here? Let's pick it up again in Revelations. If we go to Revelations, and I saw thrones, and there sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them, and I saw souls of them that were beheaded for the witnesses of Jesus and for the word of God, and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had he received his mark upon their foreheads or on their hands, and they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. 
All right, so the bottomless pit is about to be opened. This is right in between this period where the kings marveled. They're coming, they're looking. And what's going to happen next? But the rest of the dead lived not again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. Blessed and holy is he that put in the first resurrection. On such, the second death had no power, but they shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years. So those people who join the millennial reign, all right, they're going to be priests. And those who did not get resurrected are ready for judgment. And let's see what happens here in verse 7. And when the thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison and shall go out to deceive the nations which are in the four quarters of the earth. Gog and Magog. And you know, I don't want to get into details here, but it's probably Russia and China. To gather them together to battle, the number of whom the sand of the sea and they went up on the breadth of the earth and compassed the camp of the saints about and they and the beloved city and the fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them. They are destroyed. This is the final. And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophets are and they shall be tormented forever and forever. And we know after this comes the white throne judgment. There is, the saints will be judged for the things they did for God and didn't do for God. But they have eternal life with God. But those that, those that do not accept Jesus Christ and, and defy him with Satan are going to be cast into that fiery pit. And let's, let's finish Psalm 48. Because what are God's people going to be doing? All right, I'm going to bring you back to what we started with. As we have heard, so we have seen the city of God, Lord of hosts and the city of our God, God will establish it forever. Think on this. We have thought of the loving kindness of God in the midst of the temple. According to thy name, O God, is thy praise until the ends of the earth. Thy right hand is full of righteousness. Let Mount Zion rejoice. Let the daughters of Judah be glad because of thy judgments. Walk about Zion and go about her all the t and tell all the towers thereof. We're secure now. You can walk around Zion. We're, we are safe in the Lord. Mark ye all the bulwarks. Consider the palaces that ye may tell it to the generation fo following. For this God is our God forever and he will be our guide even unto death. There is an end to the non-believer, and there is an end to the believer. The believer, everlasting life. Unfortunately, if you go on into Revelations, for the non-believer, everlasting judgment. So heed this word and come to Jesus Christ. And until next time, may Jesus increase as we decrease.